Hi everybody, it's me, it's tea time. And it's Thursday. And guess what? I'm so excited. We have more snow coming. <clears throat> Alrighty then. What I wanted uh, to tell you about today, a lot of you think that I'm really like angry or something. I'm not in a bad mood. I'm just frustrated with spring. Spring will be a little late this year. A little late arriving. Mm -hmm. um, anyways, yesterday I uh, I had to go for that uh, breathing, that pulmonary testing whatever it was and let me tell how many of you have had this done I'm still out of breath today anyway it was pouring rain when I went remember it was raining yes it was a downpour and I had to go to this our new hospital and it's all so confusing there. after finding a parking spot grabbing your little ticket and finding a parking spot and then fighting with my umbrella and going into the the hospital and then having to wait in one section and then they send you up to another section you wait there he calls my name and I go in with her to this room where she tells me that I'll uh, you get on the scales I'm going to weigh you and check your height no I didn't want to have to do that not just to have my breathing done and as you, most of you know, I'm on um, an antidepressant that ca has caused me to gain over 20 some odd pounds. I said to her, I said, you know, um, of course you're going to take into consideration I'm fully clothed and I have, you know, boots on. Shoe boot things. Oh yes, she said. And uh, then she measured my height. And I said, um, I won't tell you what I weigh, but let's just say it's bad um, for my height. And um, I said to her, well, it's my height. I said, I'm probably five feet, right? She went, not quite. So my little short and overweight body followed her across the room where she said, I would like you to sit inside this glass case. Now anybody with anxiety, you do not put them in a glass case where they have to then insert this thing that looks like something you'd go snorkeling with. Not that I have ever snorkeled, but it's that same thing that you put in your mouth. You put your mouth around this thing and then clamp your teeth down on these things inside, right? So you're, you're face is now stretched this way and uh, then she starts telling you to when she's going to yeah, I'm going to tell you to take a deep breath in really really deep and then I want you to blow it out and hold 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 keep blow blow blowing so I take in this deep breath through oh, the thing in my mouth blow out as far as I'm trying to look like this out of my little glass closet at seeing if I was reaching the, the point that she wanted me to go to and man it was hard and you know what um, like I said to her after I took this thing out I said you know living with anxiety for like since I was in my 20s and you people out there that have anxiety or panic attacks are going to understand this that you don't breathe normally like normal people do we have a tendency to either hold our breath or we take just short breaths so boy did I ever see yesterday you know how how I should be breathing that was hard then if that's not bad enough because you gotta remember this is a a process that takes a, at least a half an hour this testing then she wants you to put that back in now you're going to take a deep breath 
in. Today it hurts to even do that. And you're going to put your hands on your cheeks, uh, uh, then do tiny puffs out like. I felt like I was giving birth again. And then, oh, now next we've got to, and I wish I had something that I could demonstrate. Well, I'll take my phone, right? And it was longer than this. This thing that she was going to use, like, you know, the uh, puffers for asthmatics? Like that, the subidumol type thing. At the end of this thing that I had to put in my mouth was, was a puffer thing. And she said, I'm going to have to give you three blasts of this. Well, she didn't say blast. She said, I got to give you three puffs of this. It turned out to be blasts. Because when she said, now on the count of three, breathe in. So I did. Oh. Then another one. And a third blast of this stuff. Then she says to me, she goes, now, this might make you feel a little anxious. And then she went, oops. She said, you're going to feel a little lightheaded and um, a little shaky, maybe. So after I finished that, she made me go over and sit down in this chair. And people, I'm telling you, I was like either higher than a kite or I don't know what that did to me, but I could feel my heart up in my throat. It was like, and my hands were like this. And I felt really talkative. So I started talking to her, right? And she didn't answer me. So either I was high and thought I was talking and I wasn't, or she was tired of listening to me and she had too much paperwork to do. But by then, I didn't really care. So I thought I was done. But she decides that you can do a lot better than on that first test that I gave you. I know that you can. Breathe out from here, rather than your throat. I know you can do it. Hmm. Why not? <laughs> I'll go back and sit in my glass cage once again. I went back in, and yes, I performed like a real trooper. And I blew into that snorkeling device with all my might and almost I remember looking over and thinking I hope I, that I blow that little gauge pointy thing right off of the machine but I did it and she told me I was fine heaven only knows why these clavicles are the way they are not even gonna so show. then I'm able to leave after I my head started to, and my vision got better because even every, my vision and everything went off. Then I go out, have to go back out in the rain, with fighting with my umbrella again, find my car in the parking lot, and the parking lot's packed. Then you have to drive up to the next wicket on the exit and take your little paper ticket that you had gotten as you entered the parking lot and put it into the ticket thing. And it's pouring rain, right? So I put it in, and it says to scan it, the barcode, right? I scanned it, and it says, you owe $2. And I thought, okay, I had my toonie. We have the toonie coins worth $2 here. Because um, I know you don't have them in the States. So. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I thought, all right, but where do I put it? So I thought... I don't know what to do. So I put my ticket out again in case I had missed the instructions the first time. This time my ticket got so soaked it wouldn't it wouldn't scan the barcode. It was just you know, my paper was all wet. So I thought, well this has got to be the hole there where you put your coin in, right? And I put it in and it sort of went clunk. I thought that doesn't sound right. And it didn't do anything except this thing came up and said, You owe two seventy five. For the couple minutes I was sitting there waiting, and I thought, I gotta get home. I just wanna go home. My head was. Zzz. All of a sudden, 
the thing went up. And I was able to drive out. And I don't know what happened, but I turned the wrong way, and I, I wound up going towards their emergency department. And I thought, that's not the way home. So I had to pull in, come back out, and drive past where I had just exited. Now, there was a, a lady there. I don't know who it was, but they had one of those cross things on the, those vests they wear, like a worker there for the, like a ticket. It, was, it wasn't a ticket booth, but this was like a ticket lady or a security or something. And all these cars were lined up, and a man got out of his car. I was looking as I drove by really slow, and they were looking at the machine where I had dropped my toonie in. I think I broke the machine. So, I never know. You may not see me for a while because I might have to go on the lam if the uh, authorities come after me. So that was my day. Um, I hope your day is going well. And, uh, yeah, so <laughs> yay for the snow coming. <laughs> Talk to you all soon. Bye for now. I'm out of here.